Hey guys, my name's Sasha, and this is the second devlog for a game I'm working on called Mia and Their Cat, and it is a 2D top-down adventure game about you trying to find your cat. That's pretty much the whole gist of it so far. Just this past week, I didn't have much time to do much really, so all I really got was to refactory and code and from one file, the main.c file, to 15 other source files. Seven of them are header files, so that comes to, I would say that's more like about eight source files in total, really. Today I decided I'd go over how I actually edit the maps and the whole process of compiling the maps into the game. First I'll go over the program I use, and then I'll go into the more gritty details of how I'm actually converting the files into the files needed. So the whole process starts with a program called Tiled. Here it is. As we can see, uh, it just opened up the last project I had open, which was my game here. As we can see, I can zoom out and we can see the whole map right now. It's only five by five. The reason for this, I'm planning on having a larger map, but the reason for this is five by five is sufficient enough for me to test certain features. So for example, we have the blocks that I can push over here. I've got some holes that I can practice jumping into, some switches I can press and some chests I can open. And of course, there's a lot of cliffs everywhere that I can jump off of it. But for now, we're going to just take a look at something. Let's add something to this map. Um, we can add a hole. So what we'll do, I can just copy this and we can just make this. This hole is just a path here. What I can do is I can just plop down this here. And now we have a hole that's actually functional in the game that I can't get through. We're going to make it a little bit more interesting. There we go. Now it's important when I look at this to make sure that my everything's lined up properly. And so there's, we have to count here. There is, how many tiles wide is this? It's a uh, 20 by 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 4 is 20. So this is the edge of my screen. So if I want to put a wall here, I'll ha I have to put it here. And I'll show you what happens if I don't do that. So I'll put a wall here. Make sure it looks pretty. There, there's our connected wall. So I'm going to actually save this as a CSV file. That just means it's a comma separated values file. So if we export it, export as this file here, we'll replace it. Yes, we are going to close this program close this one and then go to our file here and we are going to rebuild it and it's going to use that CSV file to rebuild the map in the game. It's done. I'm going to run it and now we can see that the wall sticks out a little bit and we can't go through there. And now we know from the map we made that there's a wall There is a wall right here and past that edge, but not below. So if we're playing the game, we can cross by over here just easily. We can see that there's a wall, but there's an issue when we don't have that wall. If we go through, you can get stuck. Luckily though, for this case, we can actually like walk back the way we came. In fact, you can actually see Mia do her jump animation the animation which he jumps down off cliffs. 
So I have to be careful when I'm making my maps to make sure that the maps kind of line up properly. That when you a player walks off screen, they're not going to walk onto something they shouldn't be. And that's pretty much how I edit my maps. Um, things, other things like, as you can see, like I put the the wall tiles in, and they work just fine. Um, we can go down and look at that hole I made. You guys watched me make it. I didn't actually add any code for it, but it still acts like a hole. Regain some health. And so maybe later on in the game, there might be an item to help the player jump over this hole, which kind of adds more, you know, flavor to the game, makes the game a little bit more dynamic uh, for puzzle solving. Things such as the switches, they're also, I also add them in this way. So if I just take a whole switch, I'm going to come back to my program here. I'm going to just add a switch somewhere. We'll add it, we'll say it's right here, a good spot. Let's see, do we like that spot? Yeah, I think that's a good spot right there. So we'll add a switch there. We'll just add a few switches. I'm going to export again. I'm going to save and we're going to go back to our program here. We've got to make sure that we close the program first so that we can rebuild it. Yes, we have to close because it has to delete the source, the um, not the source, the executable first before it actually tries to build it again. We build and run. Now we have our extra switches which they work now, they, they work just fine. And the same thing for these chests. I can put it on a chest anywhere. So if I go back to this program here, let's just copy this chest. We're gonna put it down, one here, one here, one here. Just quite a, just a few of them. We're going to again export as, we're gonna save it. Yes, replace it. And again, we have to close our program so that we can rebuild it. And once it's rebuilt, we can run it. Now we have a bunch of chests and we can open them. And when I open them, you can see here that it tells me opening chest, page zero chest opened, other six five. So this information is which chest it is. Now, this is pretty much all I have for today. This video was cut a little short because I did have plans. I made a plan. I wrote it all out for what I wanted to discuss, but I couldn't quite get that content into the video this week to be released today on Saturday. Um, so that might be pushed back. We'll see. I didn't really do much interesting stuff visually this week. It was mostly just refactoring code and I might talk about that a little bit more later on about why we should do it and why I did it. Um, but other than that, next week I'll be doing more artwork, which will be easier to have visual content for. So you should have a video for that. And once again, another reminder to you guys to get out there and explore nature. Uh, this is a video I took today this morning of a frozen lake. And it was quite breezy, but it was a nice walk. And uh, remember to get up from your desks from programming and just stretch your legs once in a while. So if you like this sort of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button, that notification icon, and leave a like if you enjoy the video. Leave a comment down below and thanks for watching.